name is Eric, and I work for Cloudinary, and today I'm going to talk to you about Space Jam. Uh, all right, this is off to a good start. Uh, if you aren't familiar, apparently you are, Space Jam is a 1996 animated sports comedy featuring Bugs Bunny and Michael Jordan. In it, Bugs and his friends are kidnapped by a bunch of small, weak, but very heavily armed aliens called the Nerdlux. Bugs tricks the nerd Lux into offering him and his friends one last chance to win their freedom in a game of basketball. This seems like a really good idea until the nerd Lux use their advanced technology to steal the talents of some of the NBA's best players, transforming themselves into the fearsome Monstars. Uh, and while this sort of transformation, you know, a bunch of nerds using their technical skills to become so powerful that it's actually a little bit scary, that might be familiar to you and me in the industry. Um, but it takes Bugs and his friends completely by surprise. They resort to doing a little kidnapping of their own, sucking Michael Jordan down a golf hole into an intergalactic struggle for their own freedom, and we're off. Uh, in 1996, Space Jam was technically a very impressive movie, but I think the thing about it that was perhaps the most ahead of its time was its weird and wonderful website. It's already come up a couple times today, uh, funny enough. Uh, but I first discovered the Space Jam website and Jen Simmons' amazing talks on the next generation of CSS grid uh, and layouts in CSS. Uh, Jen talks about how the Space Jam website embodies the uh, early experimental nature of web design. You know, this layout is based on circles rather than squares. And the deeper you go into this thing, the, the weirder and wilder it gets. Um, the site takes the idea of multimedia very seriously. It is full of way more than just text and images. Uh, there are movies, there are QuickTime VRs, there are sound files, there are interactive games and screensavers and e-cards that you can send to your friends. Uh, personally, my favorite section uh, encourages readers to use ResEdit to hack into their Netscape Navigator binary and change the Netscape logo into a, quote, hyper-cool spinning basketball, unquote. <laughs> but I don't want to talk about the page's layouts or its multi-hypermedia. I do kind of want to talk about how amazing it is that this thing still runs in 2017, just like it did in 1996, but this is a lightning talk, and there's just no time. We have to focus, and our focus today is performance. Uh, so what's the first thing we have to do when we want to think about the performance of a site? We have to measure it. Uh, so if we take the front page of spacegen.com and run it through web page tests, we can see that it has a total page weight of 281 kilobytes and a speed index score of 1,102. That puts it around the top 5 or 10% of all websites as far as speed index scores go, which makes sense. You know, uh, as Sui Jing said earlier, this was designed in 1996 to be loaded over dial-up modems, so it really had to be fast. Uh, our question today, how can we make it faster? Uh, the first thing we can do is pick some extremely fat, low-hanging fruit. Uh, it seems that at some point between 1996 and 2017, Warner Brothers added two little tracking scripts to the front page of this site. One is called omniture.js, and the other is called tracking.js, and functionally, they completely ruin the site's performance. They end up loading Google Analytics things, Adobe Omniture things, things from DoubleClick and Google Tag Manager, things from Oracle's BlueKai. By the time the dust settles, these two little scripts bring in almost 230 kilobytes of crap, right? The good news is that deleting them is easy, and when we do, right off the bat, we see an 80% reduction in total page weight. It goes all the way down to 56 kilobytes. And the speed index goes all the way down to an incredible 688. That uh, puts it well within the top 1% of the fastest pages on the internet. So the first biggest takeaway here, be really mindful of your tracking, ads, and analytics. Stuff that adds benefit to some, benef to some department in your company, but is actively hostile to the user experience. Um, you know, I get that tracking scripts like this help us fund, measure, and in the end, create our content. But if you're going to use a tracking platform, use one. Don't use all of them, as uh, Warner Brothers has done here. Uh, return to its original pristine state. Uh, the Space Jam website flies. It is blazing fast. Uh, in order to make it even faster, we need to know what is it actually made out of. If we scroll down to the content breakdown and web page speed test, uh, or, yeah, web page test, uh, I can see that approximately all of the bytes, 56 out of 56 kilobytes, are image bytes. So if we're going to squeeze any blood from this stone, we need to compress this page's images. I have some bad news. These images are already super compressed. Um, I did a little bit of research. The Space Jam web team used the creme de la creme of 1996 technology to build this thing. At that time, that was the Babelizer Pro 4.5. Retailing for a cool $600 and coming in an extremely thick box, the Babelizer was a program designed to do one thing and one thing well, image encoding. It couldn't edit images at all, but it could transcode and prepare them for the web. 
Uh, if Warner Brothers web team had been as carefree with image encoding as I was in 1996 when making like my first website, uh, improving upon their work in 2017 would be pretty easy. As it stands, we have a tough task ahead of us. And it gets worse. You see, the site's original creators had a huge unfair advantage over us. They were working with, uh, they were feeding the Babelizer full resolution, uh, full quality art, right? But all that we have to work with is the Babelizer's low resolution output. Um, if we had the original art, we might be able to make different compression decisions, uh, which resulted in different artifacts. But we don't, so we can't. Whatever new compression artifacts we add to these images are going to exist on top of those that are already there. We're effectively Xeroxing a Xerox and fighting a, a phenomenon called generation loss. So we're up against a strong opponent, and we're suffering from a significant handicap. What should we do? Um, I'm going to drink a water. Uh, but if we go back to our web page test results and click on this link in the upper right called Image Analysis, we are whisked away to a different tool entirely built by Cloudinary called Website Speed Test. Website Speed Test diagnoses and, uh, and diagnoses and gives you advice about image compression problems. It analyzes all the images on a page and uses heuristics and trial encodes to try to pick the best format for each image and dial in just enough compression based on each image's, image's actual unique content. Then it measures the original page against the recompressed result and tells us what we did and what we could have done better. Best of all, it's completely automatic and totally free. So let's go to the results. Um, despite how highly compressed these images already were, and despite our generation loss handicap, Website Speed Test thinks that it can cram the Space Jam home site homepage down into just over 60% of its original size with a minimal loss in image quality. Uh, while this 40% reduction is not as significant as the 80% reduction that we got from cutting out the tracking, it is definitely nothing to sneeze at. Uh, and if we scroll down the page and dig into the individual image results, we can see that Website Speed Test is actually uh, achieving those gains mostly by converting the original GIFs into more modern formats like WebP and PNG. Here's the uh, logo for the, the page. You can see it goes from a 15 kilobyte uh, bloated GIF all the way down to an 11 kilobyte WebP. Um, some of the other uh, images further down the page are actually a little bit more efficient when they're uh, saved as PNGs. Um, so yeah. So now that we have all these new 40% smaller resources, how do we actually implement them? Uh, you know, I could download them all from that results page and mark them all up and host them all myself, but that sounds like a lot of work, especially for all 432 images and 268 pages on the entire Space Jam website. What I've done instead is set up an auto-upload migration to Cloudinary and then use the same automatic compression features that Website Speed Test does directly, like this. Uh, the URL gets cut off there. The important parts are the F auto and the Q auto. Um, you see over there on the right. Um, which make this URL serve up the same optimized resources that Website Speed Test did. Uh, even better, it sends different resources to different browsers. So, you know, Chrome might get a WebP, while other browsers get PNGs or GIFs. But no browser is ever going to get a resource that it can't actually uh, display. Uh, by taking this easy route, I get something else too. These resources are now being served by Cloudinary CDN layer for that extra, extra, extra bit of speed. Um, our newer, faster, Cloudinary-powered version of the entire Space Jam website lives at take Space Jam down to performance.town. And I encourage you all to check it out, give it a whirl, put it through the paces, and tell your friends. Uh, if, the Space Jam, if Website Speed Test can do that much for Space Jam, think about what it can do for you. You can use it either through that image analysis tab in, uh, in the web page test, or directly at webspeedtest.cloudinary.com. Give it a go, see how much it could save you. And that's all I've got. Thanks so much.